Greetings and welcome back to another episode of the Daily Run and today we're playing as Kane. I always enjoy playing as Kane because I feel like it's one of those things where you just don't have to worry about consumables. First of all, you have enough high luck so you can get maybe a bit more consumables early on, you have the lockpick so you don't have to worry keys about essentially, and you also have that one starting key which is just gonna make your life a lot easier. And by that there's always some interesting decisions that you have to make early on. So because you don't have any bombs and sometimes you tend to need bombs early on more than keys I would say, just because getting that initial spirit heart is very important. Uh, do you try to go for bombs or just stick with keys? And I think that's a very interesting debate and obviously if you just look at it from one perspective, what are the chances of me actually finding a consumable back after I use it? So if I use a key on a golden chest, what are the chances of me getting that key back or maybe getting another consumable as opposed to when I use a bomb? And I would say the average case scenario using a key is much better. Because not only do you get something else out of it, there's a chance of getting items, obviously, but in most cases, they're gonna, you, you know what you're using it for. So when you use it on a golden chest, most often than not, you're gonna get some consumables back. When you enter a treasure room, you know you're getting in an item, and of course, when you use it in a shop, you know that you're gonna be able to enter the shop. No, those shops and treasure rooms won't always have what you necessarily need, but they do con contain, or at least the frequency of getting what you want with keys is much higher than with bombs. So if you com compare that to something like tinted drugs, most often than not, you know you're gonna get spirit cards and those aren't really a way to recuperate your cost and of course uh, if you use them and get a bomb or a key out of them which can also happen that's much rarer so, sure sometimes you get an item but th since that happens so rarely I think uh, it's not even worth mentioning in this statistical analysis of sort that I'm doing um, but one thing that you have to be aware of is that even though keys are better in that sense that you can get more consumables out of them, bobs have a ton more uses. Not only do they en essentially enable you to uh, skip doors or rooms, especially in dailies, that's very important because you can just place them next to a door, it blows them up, and then you can suddenly exit the room without having to fight it. And obviously that can really help if you're trying to get to rushes, but it can also be used offensively. And using them offensively is very important in some cases, at least I do it, uh, because I think it really speeds out the place out. And again, in dailies, I feel like that's very important because you need to get to those objectives uh, at a certain time frame. So I think it's very hard to quantify that and just say, oh, keys are better because they tend to give more consumables. Obviously, there are a lot of other factors at play here, but with that said, I still feel like keys were a bit more important in this run. I feel like golden chests uh, would be pairing a bit more frequently than... Uh, stone chest or tinted rocks or whatever just because we had that initial high luck as Kane and it'll be also because we got some of the other luck items alongside that. So I just decided to stick with the lockpick, I also think it's a better trinket than the matchstick because the lockpick always gives you a key whenever you open a golden chest uh, but the matchstick only increases your chance of finding bombs or at least I think that's how it works. Uh, but, but yeah, I think just th th that's basically my reasoning. So how did this run go up until this point? It was quite an interesting one because I got the undefined. I, re I really feel whenever I get the undefined item, uh, I was... Uh, it feels like I'm glitching the game and I'm really not sure uh, why, why that is. I mean, probably because of the I am error room. It seems like you're, you're somewhere where you're not really supposed to be. And I really like how they capture that atmosphere of being in a room which is not accessible via any other method. But... Um, and whenever you enter I Mirror rooms, they tend to be a bit weird. <laughs> like in the previous one, you saw me fighting two angel statues. At first I thought, I'm, I'm not gonna fight them, why would I fight them? I'll just try to leave, but it seemed like I couldn't because I walked over it. And just because there were two of them, they were both doing attacks, they managed to hit me, I think, eight times in total, which was uh, which was horrible. <laughs> Definitely some of the worst damage I've taken on the run. And what kind of got me is that I totally forgot that they can trigger in the first place. I knew I had the Samson's chain, I knew that I was placing the bombs down, but for some reason I felt, oh, this isn't an angel room, so I can't fight the angel statues, but obviously you can fight them, and even though I fought them, I didn't get any points in return for that, I just got hit 8 or 9 times, which was a bit disappointing, at least I got some other consumables out of that, but I would definitely not call that worth it, I just lost way too many points b because of that, but obviously then you have some of those IMR rooms which just have a ton of black flies in them, which is also, which is also a bit odd, but then you also have some which have ragman in them, so... They're always so random, but I, I feel like they're a very nice addition to dailies whenever you can actually make use of them, because they're very strategic, especially the undefined. So what you're gonna do with undefined, or at least what you want to do in most cases, uh, you can use it as a teleportation device, so you can teleport out of a curse room, so it, it's important to save that later, but there's always that small chance that you will actually get teleported to the I am error room, so you have to be aware that there's always that possibility, and if you don't have anything like a 48 hour energy pill, or maybe the battery, so you can use it twice, you have to be very careful on when you use it, because if you use it on something like a mom floor, and you go to the I am error room, you can just walk down, you can't go back up, 
uh, and do boss rush, you're just gonna miss it, and that's really a bummer sometimes. And of course, in this case, uh, again, what I had to do is, uh, maybe the instinct is just to use it immediately as soon as you clear the room, but obviously it's much better to fight mom first, go to the level deal, and then try to teleport out, and maybe explore the entirety rest of the floor. Sadly, in that case, it didn't really work, uh, but it was, it, it's a novel strategy, it's a very novel item, it doesn't show up often, and I feel like whenever I can use it, uh, the, the run is just that much more interesting and engaging because now you suddenly have another active component that you have to think about and I really like active items like that. Uh, in particular this run stat wise was okay, it wasn't too good, obviously at this point we do have some damage ups and a huge shout out to experimental treatment because in the first floor I think that single handedly saved my run to some extent, it just gave me uh, enough stopping power to actually deal with a lot of the enemies in the rooms I was facing and it just allowed me to be a m lot more powerful. Experimental treatment is a very risky proposition but I think in this particular case it did turn out well, even though I probably shouldn't have picked it up. Uh, I think on the average case experimental treatment is actually a positive outcome so you're gonna get more stats that you're gonna lose and that's usually usually what I go for whenever I pick it up and because of how Kane is because you have low range I just felt like maybe there's a chance I get a little bit of a higher range even if my damage gets reduced or my tier rate uh, it's just gonna help me out a little bit more to actually be a little bit safer but thankfully as it turned out I did both get damage and tier rate my damage I mean my, my range did reduce by a very little margin but it wasn't that influential and I was really happy that I was able to take it of course later on we got fair shot and we got magic marsh so that was kind of okay enough uh, for me to persevere with the run I, I don't know that a lot of people found guppy in this case I think I only found one guppy item, which is a shame, I don't know where the other two were. I'm pretty sure actually that one was in the curse room that I didn't go on the second floor, and the reason why I didn't go there was uh, because at first of all I had a spirit heart, so if I just went in there immediately uh, I would be wasting my spirit heart, there's no point in doing that. And when I went to the boss room and I got the devil deal, I was left with one red heart and one spirit heart. So I, I just kind of forgot about this, but if I remembered I would have definitely gone back. But I just didn't want to go back into the curse room because I thought I was going to be left at one health and obviously that's pretty dangerous especially if you don't really have a super strong super strong run going on I did feel a bit safe because of spirit of the knife knight knife knight I meant knight uh, but I still didn't do it because I felt like it was I, I'm gonna be in a way too vulnerable position so I decided that I'm just gonna leave the floor and not go in there as well but what I forgot to realize that if you have flight you can enter the curse room for free and maybe I even had a teleport card which I could have utilized I'm not sure about that but uh, if I had known that I was gonna only use lose uh, half of a spirit heart I would have definitely went to the curse room and I think that would have been a better position I would have gotten Guppy's head and maybe I, I lost some of the other guppy item along the way but just having that guppy head early on I think would be very helpful because it would really speed up my run but I definitely think the biggest mistake in all of that was just fighting those two angel statues it was more of a mistake on my part that uh, just negligence maybe more than necessarily just making a, a, a real mistake like making a ta tactical error it was just uh, me thinking that I can take them and then just I was in a bad position there it was one of those things that doesn't really happen often so you don't really know how to react when it does actually happen uh, later on I did decide to start re-rolling in a particular treasure room until I got a decent item I decided to stick with bouncing uh, rubber cement with bouncing tears and the reason for that is uh, that I was kind of strapped I had enough damage I felt like but I didn't have a way to deal with multiple enemies at once and that's very important whenever you're fighting Kaj because as soon as he starts spawning blue guys and the flies you need a way to deal with them in, in sort of an efficient manner uh, at first I didn't know I was gonna have this many black hearts and of course I didn't know I'm gonna get serpent's kiss so I just stopped at bouncing uh, uh, bouncing tears because they give me a way to deal with multiple enemies at once. In essence, they actually do function like penetrative shots in some regard because they can bounce from enemy to enemy, especially if they're clustered together, it can deal a lot of damage. And what's maybe even a bit better about this is as soon as they bounce, I feel like, or at least I think, that it can bounce back to the original enemy and deal more damage to them. So if you get really lucky, you can just do an infinite amount of bounces between two enemies until they eventually die, and that's why I think it kind of functions as a penetrative shots in AoE, and that's why I decided to stick with it. Of course, I ha did have a very interesting way of breaking the game, so to say, and you would never expect this, but first of all, it was very lucky just to how I used Undefined. I found the wafer first, and later on I did find Crack Dice, and that would have been my ticket to success in that case. Uh, but second, I just decided not to take it, I just felt like it wasn't worth my time. Crack Dice is one of those items which uh, can work really well, or at least in most cases when you find it, you can break the game with it. But I just decided to kind of ignore it, because I don't tend to like doing that, I feel like it does... 
it's too slow and it's just way too cumbersome for me to actually go and try and do it on every single daily. Obviously, I'm not talking, I'm not doing this every single daily, but when it does happen, I still feel like I, I, I need a run that's not an hour long to actually pull it off. So I decided to ignore it. I went forward and later on I did find Bodhi Ivy bag. So it made me kind of upset that I didn't find the crack dice. Uh, or at least that I didn't pick up the crack dice because obviously with Ivy bag you can do some really crazy things with that. Uh, but I wasn't too upset because at least I had Ivy bag. I could trigger my Polaroid invincibility. And of course I can use my wafer in the combination just to kind of be safe, relatively safe. Just generate, generate a lot of coins and get a lot of points for just doing that. And of course that's exactly what I was doing until I found the bomb. And of course you might be wondering why did you pick him up that he just takes your coins but one thing a lot of people don't realize is that he actually gives you the points for the coins that he picks up so what you can do when you hit your maximum so 99 cents uh, you just spawn a bunch of coins. In this case, you can see I both have the Serpent's Kiss, I'm generating Black Hearts, I have Gimpy, so whenever I use it, there's a chance of me getting another Spare Heart in the ground. Of course, when he picks up the coins, there's always a chance of me finding a pill, something like a bad trip pill, which will turn into a full health pill, or maybe he drops more hearts and I can use that. But more importantly, he does drop other consumables as well, so things like bombs and keys, and that allowed me to get to 99 cents in total. And what's even better about it is that I don't think he... Uh, no, 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 I don't think, but he does function as giving you a double amount of consumables that you would initially get. Of course, if you just picked up the coins, that's pretty good, but if you both, if he picks up the coins, then he also has a chance of getting another consumable. So it's essentially like have more consumables than you start out with, and that's a really good proposition, and that's why you should usually pick up uh, the bomb if you know you're gonna get yourself in a position like this. And of course, because I knew I had the wafer and I knew I had the ivy bag first, I decided to do that, but obviously if I, if I didn't know how I was gonna break the game, if I had something like a blank card plus Sierra, I would still pick him up maybe some situations, but you have to be wary of not to duplicate the coins. And maybe you can even do that in some cases, because uh, maybe that makes it even easier when I actually think about it, because you can always just re-enter the room to duplicate and then just let him pick up the coins on the ground. And as soon as it gets reduced to maybe a few coins, you just start duplicating again. But nevertheless, whenever you feel like you're gonna break with a particular consumable of the bomb that it, that it collects, so like if you have the jar and if you have the dark bomb, you know that that's really gonna work out because he's gonna steal all of your red hearts. And unless you have some other way to generate more hearts, it, it's, it's just gonna be in a very uncomfortable position where you really can't do anything. But of course, with the combination of items that we had here, not only was I able to sustain my Polaroid invincibility for a practically infinite amount of time, uh, but I was also able to get a lot of points just by beating enemies essentially, and because of course I was just trying to fight the enemies, uh, my bum was being busy picking up the coins off the ground and I was just getting points for doing that. So that was a really good strategy in some sense, uh, but also a very fun experience because I had nothing to worry about. One last note I would like to mention before we finish off this video is just uh, stacking shields, and essentially not a lot, again, I think people realize this, I think this is a rather new addition in Afterbirth Plus, although don't quote me on that, uh, but whenever you have a shield and you use the shield again, it doesn't just refresh, the time gets added on top of that. So if you have something like a 5 second shield from the Polaroid and you trigger it once again, so you pick up the health in between and then you trigger it again, it doesn't get reset back to 5 seconds, but it adds 5 seconds on top of the original timer. So what I did is I just used my Ivy bag just a ton of times, I got a ton of Polaroid time, so I was essentially invincible for a total of the whole fight. I think I was invincible for like 2, two minutes in total, I would even say that I would be even more invisible or at least the invisibility would even last longer if I just didn't pick up um, the trophy at that point but that's just one of those things that you can kind of use and use to your advantage whenever you know about it especially if you have a combination of items like that but in the end when you, you, did, you do see that we finished in a relatively decent spot in the 53rd place of course we did mid boss rush I feel like that could have been avoided if I just didn't bother with angel statues and if I did find that guppy set early on it would just give me more stopping power to actually deal with enemies uh, but still it was a very decent run 47,000 points is not that bad on a run that's like this I don't imagine not some, not a lot of people would find it and maybe not a lot of people would make it to boss rush it did take an hour and I did break the game somewhat with the bomb so maybe that gave me a little bit of an edge over other people who didn't really think about it but it's overall a very decent run a very fun run at the end because essentially I was unkillable and just spawning a ton of spirit hearts and black hearts is always fun. I hope you enjoyed this one guys and I hope to see you next time.